In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for our brother, who in many countries now they are persecuted because their faith is believe in Jesus. Let us pray for that they have the fortitude, the gift of fortitude, to witness to Jesus. Hail Mary, for of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, seek the wisdom. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we are preparing uh, uh, the way to definition. So we are making tools. The first tool we have is the word. Huh? We saw that uh, the word. And the first two, you cannot have a definition without words. So you will study words. And after that, we study the category of beings. Huh? Categories. The division of beings. That is the second tool we have. Huh? And tonight, we study a third tool we call predicate. predicate. And after this chapter, we study two other tools, the tool of division and composition. So with that, we can arrive to, and finally, the last tool, it is the tool of the four cards. So with those two, the word, the categories, predictable, division and composition in the four cards, we can arrive to make good definition. So that's long time, long preparation. Huh? Okay. In fact, definition is essential in every science. Huh? No science without definition, without able to know what are the object we are studying. So let us go. First, the introduction on page uh, uh, 29 in your summary. Uh, we saw that as we predetermine uh, categories are what, uh, what is said about a subject. So uh, John is, uh, is a Christian. John is a man. John is, so John is, 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 uh, is reading. John is uh, hunting. John is the father of, of uh, the president of the uh, Royal Bank of Canada. <laughs> So what? So what? Now tonight we study how the predicate is attributed to the subject. How? As we it was what the content, the being and mode of being, and tonight is how the predicate can be attributed to a subject. Um, <coughs> for example, let go to the era. John is rational. Rational is necessary to John, is essential to John. So the connection between John and rational, reasonable, huh, is a necessary connection. So that connection is essential. If I say John is a man, that connection is essential. Huh? John is a man. Okay, it is, is a sense to be a man. If I say John is an animal, animal is essential to John, okay? If I see John is six feet tall, that is purely accidental. So you see the predicate can be attributed to the subject in two ways, in an essential way and in an accidental way. So the subject can be predicated by uh, uh, something which is essential or something that is not essential, accident, uh, uh, is joyful. For example, uh, Paul is a seminarian. Uh, uh, Lou, uh, uh, Albert is a deacon. Uh, uh, Michael is a bishop. <laughs> Michael Cody, you know? It's not essential, it is accidental. Uh, okay? So, um, the purpose why we study that, it is to define. Uh, because a definition, when we define, we must also be able to distinguish what is essential 
what is that essential? You know? okay? So they are keys and students. No? In a word, the predicament are the ultimate classification of being. No? What? And the predicable are the type of linkage. How the predicate is united to the subject. No? How? The model of linkage. No? So they are essential. We cannot define without, without that. In every definition, in every, we have some exercises about that. And you have to find the constituent, the uh, what is essential, what is accidental. Now, the natural use of the predicable. So, uh, the complete list of predicable, or ways of predicating. Uh, predicable means able to attribute. Uh, predicable, able to attribute. Be careful, you have the word predicable, and you have the word predicate. A predicable is a predicate, but a category is also a predicate to a subject, you know. So it is uh, something we can attribute, but we can attribute in two ways, in a genus, in a general way. Uh, for example, you say, uh, I go to John. <laughs> John is John is an animal. In fact, we are animals. We eat, no? we reproduce, we grow, we die, etc. We are animals. But animal is essential. But it is very general. Because my dog is also an animal. My cat is an animal. So therefore, that, ge that general, when the word applies to many things, we call that a genus. Genus comes from a Latin genus, gen and generis is the is the subject the, uh, the uh, possessive capable possessive in English. Uh, I forget. I thought uh, anyway. the genitive, huh? the genitive. So then the genitive. So that means in, in English you have general. Huh? General come from genus generis. That means it is very you know, very very indeterminate. Animal. A flea is an animal. A bird is an animal. A man is an animal. Okay? So it is the genus. But uh, we, we, I, can I define man as an animal? No. I can define man. I can say, okay, man is an animal. Do you agree with that? No. Is it, is it, uh, is it sufficient to define man? No. No. What kind of animal? What kind of an rational, intelligent, and free? That it is a specific difference. So among animals, you have animals that are non-intelligent, non-rational. They have no reason, and those who are rational. So rational is huh, to animal. Uh, difference. It is a difference, but that difference makes man in a special category, a special uh, type of animal. So we say specific difference. Specific difference. That put man in a special mood. No? In English, special means specific. No? The same thing. No? Okay? So that is the second predicable. The first predicable is the asset. Okay. So the will be. John. John is an animal. John is rational. So animal is linked to John as a genus. It is very very vague because cats or animals are also in the same genus. But man inside that genus he has a particular uh, position. He is rational. That is the specific difference. Now. I can say now that man, the John, is a rational.
Asherot Alimot. Instead of rational animal, what can you write? Is a man. Is a man. No? The same thing, huh? To be a man, to be a rational animal, it is the same. So, what is that? When you look at that, you have the genus and you have the specific difference. The specific difference determines the genus in such a way that here you have the species. Another difficulty. Last class we saw the word species mean picture, huh? image. Here species mean another thing. Wow. <laughs> huh? That is close to the meaning we use of generic, huh? a species. Huh? Okay? What kind of species among fish or among birds, etc. So those the three, those three. Uh, three predicate are attributed, are predicable of John in an essential way. I give you another example. A triangle. A triangle is a figure. That symbol in, uh, in logic means is. Huh? Okay? Is. And when you have that, is not. Okay? So, no, John, is, uh, the tri triangle is a figure. But a square is a figure. A rectangle is a figure. A, a circle is a figure. So, that is the genus. Huh? To be a, a triangle is a figure, that is the genus. But now, it is, it is a figure with three angles and three sides. That is the specific difference. Specific, because figure can be many, many figures in, that, in, a, in geometry. But that put triangle apart this one, huh? specify precise. And finally, what is that? It is a triangle. In fact, a figure, a three angle, and three sided figure is a triangle. So triangle is is the specific is the species. Among the species, among all the figures. Yeah. You have extensions, you have etc. Okay? So, the same thing, huh? In fact, it is essential for a triangle to be a figure. It is, but it is general. It is essential for a triangle to have triangle and three sides. And it is essential for a, a triangle to be a three side, three, a, a three, a, a three angles and three side figure. It is essential. Okay? Now, I go back to John. John <coughs> is able to laugh. He has a good sense of humor. Huh? So he is able to laugh. He is able to talk. He is able to write, etc. Why? Is it, is it essential to John to, to talk? No. Is it essential to John uh, to, uh, to laugh? No, because if, when he will not laugh, he will not exist. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but, so it is the relation here is not essential. The relation now is Accidental, okay? It's accidental. In fact, I should have proposed that in another way. And I could share, write that like that, like that. Essential and accidental. Okay, it is accidental. But it is accidental. But at the same time, it is proper to jump. Does his cat laugh? Does the dog write? Or talk. 
No. So it is accidental. That means, what is the meaning of accidental? That means it is not essential. It happened sometimes that John laugh. It happened sometimes that John write. It happened sometimes that John talk. Okay? But that is, it is proper. We call that property. But property is not essential. It is not essential. But it flows from the, its essence. It flows from the fact it is rational. And animal, because to laugh, you must be rational and animal, both. Because laughing implies your body also. Huh? And John don't laugh. They don't laugh. They cannot laugh because they have no body. <laughs> to laugh, you must have a body. Okay? But I must laugh, and not, but their body is not sufficient. My dog has a body. Make a joke in front of your dog. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh because you are rational and intelligent. So, but when you laugh, it is your body who laugh. Huh? <laughs> Santa Claus, huh? <laughs> the body is laughing, but the body is laughing because I am a rational animal. So, because I am a rational animal, I can laugh, I can talk, I can write, I can play the piano, etc. That is proper to man. Proper to man. Now, there are other accidents in John. And John is, uh, John is uh, six feet tall, John is a golfer, John is a Catholic, John is an American, John is a Knight of Columbus, John is a permanent deacon, etc. Is it essential to John? Is it proper to John? It is axi, um, purely accidental. Uh, he was born in the United States, but it is not in this definition. I cannot define John essentially as an American. I cannot define John uh, Obama as the president of the United States. It is an accident. <laughs> yes. It is the also for Francis. That means it is not essential, it is not necessary, it is not his nature to be president or to be pope or to be teacher. You know, like, uh, maybe I will be a, tax, a taxi driver, I don't know, but I am teacher. Okay? So here you have two kinds of accident. Or if you want, the predicate is attributed to the subject in two accidental manner. One is property, but it's not essential. It is accidental, but proper. So we call that property. And the other is pure accident, predicamental accident. Huh? We say predicamental, predicamental accident. No, uh, accident. Look at it, only accident. Predicable accident. accident. Okay? Both are accident. Property is accident also, but is a special accident Flowing, coming uh, from the essence. Here it is not from the essence. So here, essential. The word essential express the essence of the thing. And when we define the thing, we want to define the essence of the thing. Huh? So to define the thing, you must have a genus, a specific difference, and with that you have a species. In fact, the definition is the species. Huh? Here, I come back to my triangle. So I saw that they are essential. Huh? It is essential to the triangle to be a figure, to be three si triangle and three sides. And, uh, okay, and both together. Now, a triangle can be equilateral. It can be a right angle. Huh? It can be isosceles, it can be scaling, etc. Many triangles, okay? So now, 
Is it essential for the triangle to be done? No. But if I go to the triangle, I discover that if I add the triangle, I will have 180 degrees. So that is a property of the triangle. I will not define a triangle saying it is a figure with 180 degrees. But if I know that the triangle at three angles, it has 380 degrees. But the fact it has a right angle or no right angle, three equal sides or two equal sides or not a single equal size, that is purely accidental. So you know the comparison between the ear, John, and the triangle. So the predicate here are attributed in essential way. It is the essence of the triangle to be a figure of genus, to have three sides, the angle and three sides specific difference, and both of them together to spe a species. Huh? So the species. Now, a property of triangle is to be to have 180 degrees. And it, it can be scanning, it can be isosceles, it can be a right angle, etc. That is purely accidental. Okay. The relation between isosceles, equilateral, and the triangle is purely accidental. So we can say two kinds of predicable. Predicable that are essential and predicable that express only uh, something in the nature. If you look attentively to the specific difference, what is the role of the specific difference? It is to determine, huh? it is to determine, determining the genus. So the genus is to be determined by the specific difference. And the, the species is determined, is complete. Huh? So to be determined, determining, determined. And the other are accidental. One, accidental as a property. It's not the essence. I cannot define man as a laughing machine, a laughing animal. I can't define that. You remember, uh, maybe I spoke to you about Blessed Bartolomeo de los Casas. De los Casas no? He's a Dominican. He was the the, uh, the apostle of the Indian in the Caribbean island. And uh, the, some Spaniard wanted to make them slaves, to enslave them. So he, he said, no, they are human and we cannot enslave a human being. So the, he, he, came, he went to Spain, Valladolid, with a third, 14 or 13 Indian. Imagine they arrived in Valladolid, they were frightened. Imagine, they were on another planet, huh? and they, they had a meeting with the, the legate of the Pope. The Pope sent the legate to, to fix if the engines are to be enslaved or not. And the, the theologian, huh, you see, according to Aristotle, what the characteristic of man, it is the capacity of laughing. Of course, we cannot see the rationality, but but we can express our rationality through talking huh, and through laughing. So if those engines can laugh, they are intelligent. And uh, the poor engines, they were so frightened, they were terrified. They had no, no taste to laugh at all. Mm -hmm. So the, they, they, they took uh, a comedian people to, to make them laugh. They did not laugh at all. Not, not, not. Finally, the, the legate stood up. He said, you know, I'm very sorry, but you know, they, they cannot laugh. Are they really a human being? So, you see, he discussed about that. And he sat down. He was a big man, but he sat down too fast. So his secretary had no time to push the chair on his <laughs> precious bottom. So he fell on the floor. And what happened? <laughs> the engine <laughs> laughed. And blessed Bartolomeo de los Calvas, I said, you see, they are intelligent, therefore they are human, and you cannot use them as slaves. But the poor conclusion is, 
You cannot use them, but you can use black people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is story. Huh? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> okay, Pay, uh, I continue. So the property are peculiar to a, uh, and in fact, accident, another word for accident is contingent, not contingent. Contingent. Contingent is an atom named to can happen. Huh? Contingent, it can happen. Contingent. Accident, the same. Huh? Accident means can happen. Huh? Can fall. Accidentally means to fall. Huh? Okay? Uh, now, the definition of page 31. So, a predicable describes the essence genus. <laughs> Uh, what is common to several uh, species, I have already explained that. It is a general classification, huh? uh, animal, applied to many animals, in a general way. Specific difference, it is the identified mark within the genus. So in the genus animal, we precise what is a beaver, what is a skunk, what is a squirrel, what is a cat, what is not. You know? okay? Species, it is the way of predicating a complete essence. Here, the essence, animal, is partial. Rational is partial. But rational animal is complete. So a definition must be complete. That means in a definition, you must have a genus and a specific defense. You cannot, for example, what is a table? It is a furniture. Is it a good definition? No, because other things are furniture. You have to precise what kind of furniture. So you have to, to, to give a specific difference. Okay? Um, I, I, can't, I go to the text here. Huh? The species states what kind a thing is. Huh? The species states the whatness uh, held in the minds of concept, the quiddity, we saw that, huh? we are essence, the nature, huh? amen, you can add now, the substance, huh? okay? This whatness derives from sensible singular, therefore, the species is predicated of singular subject. Ah, interesting. Here, the species, huh? Man. When you arrive at the level of species, the, the last level, huh? the last level, under the last level of man, what do you have? Only singular man. John, Paul, Stalin, Hera, uh, Pontius Pilate. <laughs> that is not, is the limit. Huh? The limit of universality is the species. Under the species, you have singular being. This cat, my cat, this dog, etc. Okay? That is the meaning of that. Huh? Therefore, the species is predicated of singular subject. Under the species, there, is, there are only individuals. An individual is not universal, it is singular. The species is a complete definition and under that complete definition, now you have NDV dual. Okay? Um, it is the last uh, universal term above individual. You have genus, and after that, you have the substance, many things. You remember that last week we saw that the three are porphyry, huh? and at the bottom, you have species. Under the species, now you have only individual, and individual are not species. I'm not a species. I have a, a, a number in the species. Okay? Um, so the definition clarifies the whatness of a thing. So when I want to define a thing, I have to use the genus and the specific difference. And the result, the combination of genus and specific difference, gives me the species. That means the definition. Okay. The triangle is the same. Huh? Uh, genus plus specific difference, but they need the species. Okay? And under that, they are particular objects that are triangular. Huh? Okay. Well, you have that here. Uh, 
Okay, I go to page 32. Well, here I gave you an example of, uh, of a definition starting from the more universal and more precising, precising, precising. So you don't have only one genus, you can have many genera starting from the more, but you have only one species. You have only one species, the last one. Huh? All the other are the intermediary. Well, for example, what is um, the definition is what is a seminarian olea parcel? A seminarian olea parcel, Cromwell, Connecticut. I want to define. Hmm? We have many seminarian. So, seminarian in, all, in, in uh, Connecticut, Cromwell, that is the species. The last, after that, we have individual. Huh? You, 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 you. Okay? So, human being can be male or female. Of course, I don't say not male because they have only two. <laughs> they have no neuter, huh? no neuter. Okay. So male can be believer or non-believer. So it is a male believer. It must be a Catholic because we have also believer, but they are not Catholic. That Catholic, I, I preside. I, I give a new precision, preparing to priesthood. Not to diaconate, to priesthood. <laughs> Though, okay? And now, in, not everywhere, in a major seminary, because someone also are preparing not in a major seminary, they can prepare in a parish, huh? and specialize for older men. Because some seminaries are for young men, but Cromwell was created for mature men. Mature men. At that time, 25 years old was mature. <laughs> Today is a kid. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> and specialized not everyone in the United States in Connecticut, not in Wisconsin. I am scholar. Not in John the Twenty Third in Boston. Not in Gonzaga University in Cromwell, Connecticut. In Connecticut, and in Connecticut, in only a person, because we can have also maybe some who are not. Preparing, not in our seminary. Huh? And finally, what I have under that, I have my seminary. I have John, Paul, uh, uh, Jab, and uh, Wynn, according. Okay? So, what is that? Paul, Simon, and they are individual. And what is all that here? All that, that together, all that together is the species. What is that? The definition. So we define using generous, generous and specific differences. We precise, we precise more and more and more and more. Okay? And by the way, we precise here by division. I told you that a tool to definition is a division. Here you have, uh, we divide. We use contradictory opposition. Right? It is that or not that. I cannot say, for example, believer, Catholic, and Protestant. No. Because I can have similarly and orthodox also. No? Okay. So I go now to number two. Predictable accident deriving from the essence property and adhering in essence. That means existing in the essence. Look, my power of reading, my power of talking does not exist only in my body. It exists in my own being, you know, my own essence. It is a property of my own essence, of my human, my rationality and my animality. I cannot read without a body. I cannot read if I don't have eyes. You know, when we speak about the essence of man, it is rational animal, body and so on. So the property are in the body and so Even my way of thinking, if we say that so, is not only from my mind. I cannot think without my body. Because my knowledge comes from my senses. So my mind, you know, we are one, one body and soul are one reality. So I read, I think, I think with my mind, of course. But I cannot think if I have no experience before. 
Okay. Now, um, property. Okay, I explained that to you. Huh? I go to um, <laughs> page 33. Oh, okay. I'm sure if something is there, I just at the bottom of page 32. Um, you know, property deriving from and peculiar to the essence, no? particular, can be taught as a trademark of a giving, given thing, a trademark. For example, laughing is a trademark of man. You know? okay? When property in the next page huh, is present, the thing from which it follows is also present or can be present. The capacity of laughing proves the existence of the intellect. I prove that I am intelligent through the fact I can, I can laugh, I can read, I can talk. All those prove that I am intelligent. You know? But I cannot prove that without my body. When you write, you are intelligent, but you use your hands. <laughs> we can write without my body. I cannot talk without my body. I think now, I teach, but I use my body. I talk, no? <laughs> and you use your ear, I hope. Not only your ear, we go farther than that. <laughs> okay, um, a remark here. Well, property uh, uh, is used differently by logicians and scientists. In logic, property denotes some one characteristic peculiar given to the essence of a thing. In, with other. In science, for example, in biology or in chemistry, physics, huh? um, property designates several general characteristics which together give a, per a particular distinction of the thing. Uh, when we, def when we want to give the property of a beaver, for example, then we have to, to give to that animal many, prop many characteristics. In, so the beaver has proper, some property. He has a flat tail, for example. Huh? Uh, a dog has property. So we will see that in a few minutes. But that is very, very important. I, I, okay, I, I think this is time to, to talk about that. In science, is it difficult in science, physics, chemistry, to define using only genus and specific effect? In fact, definition by genus and specific difference are usually used in philosophy and in mathematics, in abstract. But when we are in the classification, the observation of singular realities, we cannot define things only by genus and specific difference. I cannot define a beaver as an irrational animal. I have to have many things, you know. So, what they do in science? They take in science the general characteristic of a class of animal, of a class of flowers, of a class of butterfly, you know, and of a class of diseases in and, and this. Okay? And so, I continue. Rather, this constant, that's very, very important. This constant general characteristic, for example, proper to the beaver and making the beaver different from the ground out, we see ground out, or from the, the, the skunk or from the squirrel, huh? are actually what we call inseparable accidents, properties of material thing, and play in the definition a role equivalent to the specific difference. That paragraph is excessively important. I will try to explain that because that is, you must know that absolutely <laughs> and to, make, to do your exercise. But in philosophy, in theology, in mathematics, we can define using a genus and a specific difference. But when we are in concrete reality, you know, even for a seminarian. <laughs> we have to use many characteristics. But those characteristics are not essential. Those characteristics are accidental. Come back to our seminarian. Huh? All those characteristics are accidental. So, but if you take a, a, 
the beaver, and that beaver, you want to describe that beaver. Can I just flag it? It will have characteristics which are different from the squirrel. Huh? The squirrel it will be different, or from another animal. Those characteristics together, together, even if they are accident, they are not essential, they are taken together, we call that inseparable accident. And that those inseparable accidents in the definition, play the same role as a specific defense. So we can, in philosophy, we define by genus and specific defense. Okay? In science, huh? in science, or in most of in the dictionary, take any dictionary, we define by a genus and by inseparable accident. Why? Because we cannot, in science, find the essence of things. <laughs> we observe only phenomena, and the phenomenon outside, the color, the dimension, the activity. We cannot go to the essence of We are not in metaphysics. We are in the domain of observable. So the majority of definition in the dictionary are made with urgence. For example, animal or, or tool or instrument, or uh, I don't know, huh? and inseparable, that means, for example, if you define in chemistry hydrogen and oxygen, you will say gas, they are gas, they are without color, colorless, without other, huh? otherless, so we have many characteristics, but we have also something different, oxygen and hydrogen, so Many are common, but some ones are different. For example, a beaver is a rodent. A squirrel is a rodent. But a beaver has some activity a squirrel does not have. A beaver builds dams. uses tail here to, uh, to, to, um, to solidify the dam on the, the, the clay. So when I define the squirrel, I have to use characteristics which are not exactly the same for the beaver. Some one are common, they are rotten, huh? but some one are different. So that is the way we define. And all those accidents together, together, play the same role as a specific difference. But they are not a specific difference. Why? Because the specific difference express the essence. And the inseparable accident express accident. <laughs> they are not the essence. I give you an example. Suppose my beaver, my poor Canadian beaver, huh, a day he, lo he, he lost his tail. A squirrel lost his tail. My cat lost his tail. Does he continue to be a cat or a squirrel or yes? Because they are inseparable. Accident, they are accident. A rodent normally uses teeth to eat. But suppose the teeth have broken, disappeared, he continues to be a rodent without teeth. <laughs> He's a rodent. <laughs> Those who have. A, when, you, when you take off your teeth, you put that on the table, are you a human being? <laughs> You are no more a rodent, but <laughs> because man is a rodent, you use the no? Okay, a carnivore. Huh? Okay, those who are vegetarian, are they human? <coughs> a human is a carnivore. <coughs> yes? It is accidental. Huh? Accidental. Okay, but that is very important. Because in the exercises you will have, you will say, what are the constituents of the definition? First, you have to find a genus. What is the genus? The genus is the more universal word. For example, an animal, a tool, huh? an object, etc. The rest will be inseparable accident. Okay? But well, we'll come back on that. Father. Yes. So if uh, someone's brain dead, they're no longer 
have rational thought, but are still a man. Yes. Even if a man would become who lose, who loses his mind, it continues to be a man. In fact, he, he doesn't lose his, his mind, he loses the usage of his mind. Yeah. Like a baby has the intellect, a baby has the will, but he does not use it. Okay. It's, the, it's the same, you know, a pianist, even one, one he does not play, is a pianist. Huh? Okay? Uh, uh, I go now to page 32, so you see now the difference between separable accidents and inseparable accidents. So inseparable accidents, when they are all together, united to make a definition. Separable accidents, they are the accident we saw, you remember, when I say John is a golfer, John is a Catholic, that are separable accidents. So we have two kinds, three kinds of accidents, if you want. We have property, the flowing from the essence. We have, I will say, separable accident, pure accident. Uh, John, is, uh, John is the mayor of uh, Cincinnati, but well, that is a pure accident. And if you define an animal or a tool, and you you put together many accidents together, many, all those accidents together are inseparable accidents. Okay? Um, even in the, uh, for example, a beaver. A beaver, if he grows, he's still a beaver. To have a, 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 to, to have a heavier way, huh? <laughs> have more pounds, is a, separable accident. But when I define the beaver, I don't define the way using the way of the beaver. I, I use category, categories, characteristics, huh, which are necessary to understand what is a beaver. They are necessary to understand, but they are not necessary in the, in the essence of the beaver. Uh, I told you that t the tail of the beaver must be in the definition of the beaver. But by accident, somebody cut the tail of the beaver or cut the tail of your dog, but you continue to be a beaver and a dog. Okay? Well, I take three exercises. You will. I, I insist, you know, I have a long time I, I teach, I know what are the problem. <laughs> and one of the problems is to understand that the inseparable accident. It is the many accidents together to define hydrogen. It is the way science functions. Huh? Uh, and it is applied to a little genus. But they are not the essence of the thing. But they together, they play the same role as the specific defect. Okay? Uh, I, no, I go not to... Um, I will we say on page 32, at the bottom of page 32, huh? uh, it is an aggregate of inseparable accidents, an adequate substitute for the specific defense. And they play the same role. And if you, may, you go to Miriam Webster, you, you, what is an armor, what is a dog, what is a, a kangaroo, he will give a definition using inseparable accident. Okay? They cannot say a kangaroo is an irrational animal. <laughs> In fact, I told you, huh, the definition using genius and specific difference, we find that in, especially in philosophy and in mathematics. Okay? Now, page 34. There is a difficulty now about the word accident. I will try to clarify that. For many students, it's, it's Greek. You know what I told you, Ak, and the, 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 the vocabulary in philosophy is very technical. Here is an example here. Accident, when we speak about grid canon or category, huh? Eh? 
and accident when we speak about predictable. And we use the word accident for both of them. So we must be attentive to distinguish accident in the critical man means existing existing no egg exist existing in another remember that and it opposed to what opposed to substance existing in itself but we saw it out last week, huh? the critical men uh, are divided into substance and accident. Okay? Now, now what we study in our predicable? Accident. It is the way the predicate is attributed to a subject. There is two ways. Essential or accidental. Genus. John is an animal that is essential. John is a catholic, is this accidental. So we call that accidental predicable. Huh? Or accident. So the word accident can apply as a predicament. Hmm? The quantity, quality, relation, they are accident. Predicament, accident. Because they exist in another. Okay? They, they are not in the, in fact it is close to that, huh? they are not in the, in the they have no, no essence in themselves, no existence, they exist in and out. Here, it is, it is not the existence, it is the relation how the predicate is attributed to the subject. It can be attributed in an essential way, it can be attributed in an accidental way, a contingental way, and we saw Three possibilities, huh? in fact two. One divide. We have property and we have separable or inseparable accident. All that are accident. Okay? But we have also accident on the street, you know. <laughs> a car a smash and all the car. Huh? Okay. Um, I give you an example here. We have that here. And the red of this dress and this dress is faded. Well, red is a predicamental accident related to the being, you know, the color of a dress. But faded here is applied to red in an accidental way. The red can be not faded. It can be uh, very clear, violent, etc. You know? Okay. And after that you have a uh, um, chat, huh? Summarizing all that. Everything I told you is in. Huh? Okay? So you can read that and listen. Now, why we study that? Of course, it took us a happy time together. Happy hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know they are all the way to pass a happy hour. Spend a happy hour. <laughs> why? Well, the purpose is huh, the, to, in fact, it to arrive to a Valid definition. Okay. The human being seeks knowledge which will always be true. So each person wants to know the answers to things, answer which will be permanent, which have a permanent value. So what is interesting here? What we distinguish? We distinguish something they are permanent, and we distinguish something they are accidental. So not everything is on the same level of value. Some things are essential to men, some things are not essential to men. The only permanent knowledge we can have is the stating the essence. And when we define the thing, what is a definition? Is to find the essence. What is the thing? Okay. Or if we cannot arrive to the essence of the thing, like rational animal, we try to have some just idea, true idea, 
using inseparable accident. See, for fun tonight or tomorrow, you can go to Miriam Webster, take a turn, look at the definition. You know, and we, we will see how they proceed. Huh? A general term, after that, they give a series of characteristics. When you study chemistry, it is the same. Huh? The characteristic of calcium, of sodium, of potassium, the characteristic of hydrogen, nitrogen, you know. Okay. It is the way we, we, we arrive to knowledge. We classify. Why did we, did we classify? To arrive to a definition. To arrive to discover the inseparable accident proper to a thing. And when we have all those inseparable accidents with the genus, we can define what is the thing. Huh? And that is always true. A definition of a thing is for error. The beaver is the beaver for all eternity. <laughs> the definition of a thing is forever. It is so true that Plato thought that those definitions, those ideas, are the reality. And the material thing are only the shadow of the ideas. For him, the real horse is not the horse in the field, it is the idea of horse. Because the definition and the idea, the definition, the essence of horse is eternal. A horse will be forever a horse. The definition of a cat cannot be changed into a mouse <laughs> or into a lion. A lion will be a lion and a mouse a mouse forever. Sicutera, in principio, and we get some pair, it is in the mind of God, in fact. You know? A definition is a atemporal. A definition is universal. That means outside of time and space. And if in your definition you enter something of time and space, precise, huh? and individual, singular, is no more a definition. It's a description of that. For example, if you see a dog is an animal, etc., etc., black with a white collar, a clergy dog. Huh? My dog in Cameroon was a clergy dog, <laughs> clerical dog. No, but it was a dog of a similar. Hmm? Now, that is no more a definition. It is the description of this dog. So, in a definition, you must use think universal, applicable forever, in the past. As in the field. Is the reason why when you read a text about, for example, bees or horse or dogs, read that article that year, it was written seven, uh, one hundred years before Jesus Christ, you look at that, they are exactly the same thing as we see today. The same definition, the same test. I saw recently a picture of dogs, and they discovered that in the cave, 10,000 years before Jesus Christ. And when you see those dogs, <laughs> it is no different with the dog we have today. Dogs are dog. Of course, they were wolves before, but you know, when they were dog, they are dog. They are no more wolf. Even if their ancestors, <laughs> I don't make a joke here, but even if my ancestors are, uh, uh, is a monkey or a orangutan or a gorilla or a chimpanzee, I'm not a chimpanzee. That's a human being. <laughs> Sometimes I provoke my student telling them, if my grandfather was a, was a, was a chimpanzee, I, I have no problem. I have no problem. Because I am intelligent, you know? And they evolve. I don't want to. I, it is a sensible subject for many people. Okay. So the, if, in here, in the last page, where you have the, uh, the synthesis of everything, you know? So I try to simplify the more I can, and I think the best to know is to practice. No? So you have some exercises to find the changes, to find the specific difference, or to find the inseparable accident. Sometimes they give you, find, encircle the genus, and the rest uh, you put, uh, you underline, no? okay? I go now to chapter six, the method in for definition. We saw the first tool is the word. The second tool is the category, huh? the third tool is the predicable, 
And finally, the fourth tool is the method of definition. And to define, we have two methods. The method of division and the method of composition. That means we can define by division, as we did for a seminarian in Karamoetra. We divided, divided, on the porphyry tree, Mr. Porf, porf, here, porphyry, porphyry. Or we can also combine things. It is another method. But the more used method is the method of division. If you know that, it's sufficient. But we'll say a word about the method of composition. So, an um, introduction. <laughs> The sign used, that is a summary, huh? our work, we saw that. After that, we ultimate the categories, after that, the pro okay. Now, why we do that? It is to find a procedure, a method. Huh? What is the word meta? It is meta odos in Greek. Meta, with, with, meta, the odos uh, way, huh? an odometer, odometer, to measure when you walk, when you run. Huh? So, meta. Odas. So, meta. Huh? Meta. Okay? Or if you want, procedure. Huh? Uh, process, procedure. Okay? Um, the method of division. The first is to give a name to a thing. When you ask a question to your father, what is that? And your father, that is a dog, that is a hen, that is a, it is a squirrel. That, you know, in the way we know, we know the first the name of thing. Okay? And, uh, but if the meaning of the name is unknown, we can, suppose you don't, well, your father does not know the name, but he can say that at least that is an animal. It's not a flower. A skunk is not a flower. Don't smell that. Hmm? <laughs> okay. Secondly, uh, you can produce a picture. This is what I did it with the, with the, with the sour sap, huh? Corazon or... Uh, in uh, the third one, uh, the Guanavana, or Guanabana. Huh? That's, uh, that, yeah, a, a kind of idea. Or we can also have a verbal description. Suppose I have no picture, I can say it's a big strawberry, it is green, it is sweet, it, yum, 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 yum. So uh, you have a, a, a certain idea. That is a nominal definition. You, you, you give a name, you give a, a short description. I have an idea, but I don't, I, I don't know what is that exactly. But I know a thing. What is the most important th know the thing about the thing? It's that the thing first exists. And when the thing exists, we can try to find what is that. Okay? So the nominal definition. Many times we use nominal definition. For example, if I ask you, even somebody who does not go to class of philosophy, but this philosophy will answer it is the law of wisdom. That is nominal definition. Okay? Um, <coughs> theology, uh, the science of God, theos, that is nominal. Many times in philosophy, we begin by the nominal definition. And most of the time, the nominal definition, where do you find that? The etymology, uh, etymology, the root, uh, the root of the word. And I encourage you, every time you find a new name, a new, a new term, go to a dictionary a philosophy or when Miriam Webster College, Collegiate, and he gave you the root of the word. It's very interesting. You understand much better, huh? much better. Um, so the, it, it is a result during many years in the studium huh, of the Jesuit, you have to study Latin and Greek. And when I was young in my country, nobody was able to become a doctor, a lawyer, without studying Latin and Greek. And I don't know what you do in the United States, but in Canada, in any university in medicine, the first year is to learn uh, the Greek root, Latin root, to understand hematos, hematology, for example, a lot of work, psychology. If you know, at least if you, know, if you never study Greek or Latin, some dictionary they give you the root huh? in Latin, the root. That is it's worthy to read that. Because after that, when you read the text, you understand. Otherwise, you, you, for example, uh, um, cynic, somebody, we say in English, uh, cynic, cynic, cynical, huh? somebody who mocks cynical. 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 Mm -hmm. 
You know what is the meaning of cynical in Greek? Dog. 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 Because the dog was naked, you know, and he was not afraid to have an intercourse in public. <laughs> so that is the root. Cynic, cynical. And you have a lot of words we use. They come from Greek or they come from Latin or from French. And when you know the, the root, uh, it is very um, it is, uh, interesting. I discover more and more. I almost every day I discover a root. Huh? I like that. I like that because I understand better my language, better English, better French. Okay? Um, the perception of the second, of the first it is nominal definition. After that, we try to uh, to classify. So we uh, we are we use the general category. Huh? We use the ten category. We make a difference between the substance and the accident, and we know the different accident: quantity, quality, relation, passion, action, etc. Huh? We use secondly the genus and specific difference. Huh? So we use all those things. For example, here we have some definition using. The ten categories. Uh, what is a batch? A quantity of. Huh? What is temperate? A quality of. Of course, they are not good definition, but those definitions use a category. Okay. Uh, a remark. We must be careful not to use only the, the, the category of where and when. Yeah, category. Huh? A projectile, you want something, huh? inventor, when someone combined, etc. We have to be better. Okay, I continue, page 38. The division now between a genus and its species. It is what we study in the first part of the class, no? Uh, the nature of the division. First, it is the first procedure because we have another way of, uh, it is the way of composition to put together. So the definer searches for distinctive mark, huh? which sets the thing apart from all the other. In fact, to define, we classify. To define, we put apart. Remember when we define what is a seminarian in Holy Apostle? We put apart female, we put apart non-Catholic, we put apart, etc., huh? non-preparing for priesthood. Finally, we arrive to. So it is a division. We divide, we classify to define. Okay? After perceiving the general class, the genus, huh, we search for what is the specific difference or inseparable axiom. And most of the time, I will say 99% of the time, it is inseparable axiom. Because I told you, huh, that definition by genus and specific difference is proper to philosophy and mathematics. So a natural method is to divide into opposite group. Well, we can use op contrary. Remember, that's, that's, that's contrary, coal and hot. But between coal and hot, we have many things. We have, that is contrary. The best division is not by contrary opposition, but by contradictory opposition. By contradiction. Hot and non hot. The water is hot or is non hot. <laughs> no middle. <laughs> huh? Because if you see the water is hot or cold, be between, we are lukewarm, we have all the possibilities. Okay? Um, not the rule. And you know, I, by the way, personally, I am very opposed to that kind of examination we call true and false. That is my opinion. Because after a long time of teaching, I realized that true and false are very, cause a lot of problems to the most intelligent in the class. Because they see nuances that the teacher does not see. So sometimes in my examination, I have no choice to ask question, it is true or false. But I ask, or valid or invalid in logic. But if it is invalid, give me a reason. There must be a reason. Valid, no problem. But invalid, give me a reason. Why do you see it is invalid? Otherwise, you take a, a, a dime. 
Trup. Trup. Poți. De la a probability. Ok. Ok, rule not for the division method. The first rule, each member of the species must have less extension than the genus. I have animals, rational and non-rational, but non-rational must not be greater than animal. That is common sense. Common sense. Second, all members to get, take you together must equal the extension of the general class. Oh, I give you an example. Suppose I say religious. Religion. And you say Catholic and Protestant. Is it good? No, because Catholic plus Protestant does not give me all the religious on the, on the earth. So what is the best? To be sure, Catholic and non-Catholic. That's no problem. <laughs> In fact, it is the way used in computing, one or zero. Hmm? When you put on the electricity, it is on or out. Never we have half, half electricity. It's the same we have living or not living. Death, dead or non-death. Dead or non-death. We have not half death. Sometimes people say, so I have half death. No. <laughs> you have death or not death. No middle. <laughs> okay, I continue. Um, three. <laughs> uh, focus on inseparable accident. I told you, uh, most of the time, especially when you define ma uh, material realities, you are obliged to use inseparable accident. Why? Because define, define the, the, the force on our senses. Four. Use the most obvious difference first. We begin by the more general difference. For example, human being, male and female. I don't begin by human being, Catholic and non-Catholic. Of course, it's possible, but it's not. No, you have to always start from the more the general to the uh, less general, finally, to arrive at the last level species. No? Okay. Five, every subsequent division must fall under each new heading. Uh, for example, the ball is a container is deep. Well, container can be deep, genius, deep or non-deep. Huh? If it is deep, it can open at top or not non-open at top. It is rounded or non-rounded. So we have always huh? that is the tree of per porphyry. Huh? Yeah, the genus, and after that. Well, Mr. Porphyry does not present that like that, but he is like that. That is the best. You can see all the characteristic defining. And what is the definition? It is all that. All that is the definition. The inseparable axiom. Okay. Six. To perceive the distinctive node uh, belonging to the thing defined. To perceive the distinctive node. That means to define, you must see all those distinctive nodes, characteristics. It is seeing that here that you can define what is the, the object or the, the animal or the thing. No? The definition is, is, any definition is based on that. That is division. We, de, we define through division. But every division must have a criterion. For example, uh, human being. Male and female, what is the criterion? The sex. Huh? After that, uh, Catholic, uh, Catholic or non Catholic, what is the criterion? Yeah. Religion. Religion. So every huh, must have a criterion. Uh, Together, these inseparable accidents are adequate substitute for the specific difference. They are not the specific difference, but they play the same. It, it, this, it is necessary to have that, otherwise we cannot define. Uh, take any definition, we cannot define a squadron by his, by his genus sense. His genus, yes, is specific difference, but we can say he is an irrational animal. <laughs> but it's not 
a good definition for a book of physics or biology. Yeah? Okay? So, <coughs> before you will be decomposed too much by my class, take a rest to be, to be, uh, uh, you see, unified. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, no? Well, I don't care if they want to. The definition of marriage, logically, you know, excluding all the moral and biblical. It can, it can be fine. It can be fine. It can be a mod, a uh, living. Uh, can be. It can be fine as a contract. We can define as a biological activity. You know, we have to try to take a, a specific point of view, huh? a yeah. criterion division. Huh? Yeah. So, if you go to a, 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 a book of law, huh? yeah. you have not the same definition as the marriage in the book of theology. Okay. Because the perspective is not the same. Yeah. But it should say almost something not contradictory. Huh? Yeah. But now we have marriage, uh, gay marriage, is another problem.